Hi, I'm Dr. Swapnil Parik, an alumnus from the 2005 IB batch of the Dhirubhai Ambani International School, and largely thanks to my biology HL teacher, Mr. Coleman. Today, I'm a practicing physician on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic in Mumbai, India. Um, in December 2019, I was an internist uh, with an interest in endocrinology and working on an artificial intelligence powered, human-centered uh, healthcare technology platform uh, with my startup, DIY.health. Um, in January, uh, when I first heard about uh, the, an outbreak in Wuhan, China, um, due to a novel coronavirus. I have a background in infectious disease, uh, so I really started to worry that this was looking like a bad bug. Uh, in October 2019, the Johns Hopkins uh, Center for Health Security simulated a novel coronavirus outbreak, and uh, was, that simulation was called uh, Event 201 Scenario, and the outbreak left 65 million people dead over an 18-month period. And it had me really worried about respiratory pathogens, coronavirus uh, in particular. Uh, in February, two things started becoming clear to me. The scale of the outbreak, that it was uh, really going to impact every aspect of our lives. And the second was that there was a lot of apathy um, in society, um, in, with governments across the world in responding uh, to the pandemic. I started working with those two of my co-authors uh, on a book on the coronavirus and uh, thanks to my English HL teacher, uh, Mr. Valence, uh, I managed to write something that uh, is not entirely rubbish to read. Uh, the book's called uh, The Coronavirus, What You Need to Know About the Global Pandemic. And we set out to try and tell a story about um, outbreaks, um, how they go pandemic, uh, human responses to them and uh, immunology, virology, things that I found super interesting and that I hope other people find interesting also. But as the events started to unfold, uh, it sort of became a journal of uh, the events that were unfolding. Uh, I found writing the book to be a really transformative experience because uh, it inspired me to devote myself uh, to pandemic response and reading uh, research papers and uh, understand the virus uh, reignited an old passion for clinical research. Um, it was a very transformative experience. Um, while I was writing the book, uh, I had to start thinking about uh, where the virus was going to take us, how the pandemic was going to shape, shape up, uh, things that we could do um, as individuals, things that I could do as a healthcare worker to respond to the pandemic. And um, I also made a lot of new friends, uh, very smart people, engineers, um, other doctors, scientists, uh, molecular biologists. And um, it was a very interesting experience because uh, I needed to reach out for help to understand uh, the science uh, while writing the book. And every time I reached out to someone, um, I always got a positive response. Uh, someone was always willing to help. I uh, managed to connect with scientists all across the world and the U in, in India, the US, uh, UK, Netherlands, Israel. So it was a really reaffirming experience for me. And um, when I started working on solutions, um, it, many of those same people were more than happy to help and we formed a multidisciplinary team of experts in uh, various um, in various professions and were able to come up with a lot of uh, solutions like uh, um, India and Mumbai's first, first hermetically sealed uh, pressurized uh, testing kiosks for COVID-19, uh, negative pressure fever clinics uh, to prevent uh, people with say dengue or malaria who were going to a clinic from getting infected uh, by COVID-19 patients there um, with uh, a bunch of experts um, and the Tata Memorial Hospital in Mumbai worked on uh, building the country's first inflatable field hospital uh, for COVID-19, which can be set up in about 12 hours and uh, you can use this to add uh, beds in a surge uh, situation. Um, 
uh, really cool things. We worked with the Indian Council of uh, Medical Research uh, on convalescent plasma therapy. Um, worked with the robotics team uh, from Pune on building a drone uh, that can traverse the sewers and autonomously collect samples um, to uh, test the sewage uh, for virus. Think about it like testing uh, a whole community uh, for the amount of virus in, the, uh, in, in their waste and then following the pipes back uh, to try and identify the source. A little oversimplification, um, but very cool. At least, at least I find it very cool. Um, with uh, with uh, another group of experts uh, came up with a solution to keep healthcare workers safe, something called uh, PAPR, or powered air purifying respirators. These are traditionally very, um, conventionally very expensive, but um, communicating healthcare workers need um, what uh, the problems we were facing was able to come up with something that uh, is really low cost, um, you know, works for a country like India. Um, is scalable here yeah, and can keep uh, the healthcare worker wearing it safe from infection uh, while they're on the front lines. Um, um, and it, it's helped keep me safe. Uh, I'll show you a little video. It looks really goofy. My friends joke that it looks like I'm trying to uh, uh, asphyxiate myself that uh, you'll see in the video. It's fairly effective at um, keeping the healthcare worker safe and very low cost. Um, so it's suitable for a country like India. One of my favorite subjects uh, while I was doing my IB was the theory of knowledge. Um, again, thank you to my uh, DOK teacher, Mr. Valens. And um, I think it was uh, one of the first schools in Mumbai that was, uh, the Dhirubhai Ambani School was one of the first schools in Mumbai that was teaching uh, students critical uh, learning skills, critical thinking skills. Um, made us confront our own internal biases. And that really served me well uh, during the pandemic. Uh, I was working with the Indian Council of Medical Research on a uh, randomized clinical trial. It was actually the world's um, first RCT on uh, convalescent plasma therapy to complete enrollments. And I was very passionate about plasma therapy. I thought it held a lot of potential uh, to save lives. Um, and it was an interesting experience because the end result was we found that it, uh, it didn't have any benefit in saving lives. And um, having a studied DOK really helped me uh, separate my own internal bias um, of wanting the therapy to work from what the evidence um, you know, demonstrated, what the data demonstrated. Uh, similarly, during the pandemic, uh, to deal with the slightly um, odd position at times as a physician as a physician scientist of having to refute unscientific claims that I desperately wanted to be true um, you know as watching the crisis the, the suffering around me uh, I, many times I hoped that uh, I hope I'm wrong I hope uh, other experts are wrong um, that COVID-19 isn't going to shape up to be uh, the humanitarian and healthcare disaster uh, that we thought it was, but um, you know, of course, um, it, it, we're heading exactly where experts said we would. I hoped uh, billions of people wouldn't get infected, that millions of pe uh, people wouldn't die. Um, I hoped that we would develop billions of doses of um, a safe and effective vaccine in an unimaginably quick uh, timeline, and that resource-rich countries would be just and equitable in distributing these um, around the world. Um, I hope for many things, but uh, hope isn't always scientific. And theory of knowledge really served me well, um, you know, in confronting my own hopes and uh, looking at data and being able to stay on message, uh, present evidence-based messages uh, rather than um, emotion or bias-driven messages. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm quite very grateful to my biology teacher and my uh, TOK teacher, um, you know, for giving me the tools and that you know served me so well uh, during the pandemic. I think in the you know, last uh, nine months, uh, being on the front lines, I learned a lot um, about myself, but also about um, society. Um, 
uh, about the systemic inequities um, in society and how these set us up for outbreaks. Uh, one of the things I've learned is that in a pandemic, the first rule is that we're all equally safe or unsafe together. Um, a society, a community is as safe as its least safe members. It only takes one person uh, to spark an outbreak. And it only takes a few people uh, that are unsafe to uh, accelerate an outbreak into a pandemic. And um, this realization has um, uh, really helped uh, inspire me to focus on trying to fix some of these uh, inequities in healthcare access, something that I hope to do through the pandemic uh, and in the, in the post-pandemic period. Um, serving as a healthcare worker on the front lines uh, during this pandemic has had some real uh, highs and lows. Um, several of my friends, colleagues, uh, co-workers, some of my teachers have been infected. Uh, some of them sadly haven't made it. Um, so those were really difficult times, watching uh, the suffering, uh, having to make difficult decisions. Um, it, there, were, there were some real difficulties in, in coping, uh, especially in May and June, um, with the crisis that was unfolding uh, all around. But uh, there have also been uh, great highs. Um, I uh, didn't really, uh, I, I mean, I always loved being a doctor, but I feel during the pandemic, um, I was really able to find my purpose. Um, was really able to identify the areas that I felt most passionate, uh, that my skills um, really enabled me to excel at. And um, it was a real privilege uh, being able to serve on the front lines and um, uh, help people in their uh, time of crisis. I think also um, uh, this, this uh, outbreak in particular and the healthcare crisis really um, re reaffirmed in me that people can come together to solve really big challenges. And it's not just the pandemic. We have a looming uh, economic crisis ahead of us. A climate change is not too far away. We're seeing fires, uh, wildfires um, across much of the world right now. So there are big, big challenges uh, that need to be solved. Uh, one of the key takeaways from the Thirupai Ambani International School is our school motto of um, daring to dream and learning to excel. And I'm very hopeful that <clears throat> the students uh, in the school right now and all the students who've come out from that school who have inculcated that attitude are going to be able to work on some of these uh, really big challenges in the future and help resolve them. I think one of the big questions on everyone's mind, or at least one of the questions that uh, I get a lot is, um, when, when do you think we'll be able to return to normal? What will the world look like a year from now? And I always think that the more pertinent question is, what can we do over the next year to make the world a better place? I think there's a lot we can do, not just to respond to the pandemic. Each and every one of us can, uh, take small measures on a daily basis to stay safe, uh, to prevent infecting others if we have any symptoms uh, by staying home. And those small actions add up a lot. Um, I just wanna share a graphic uh, to demonstrate what I mean. So you can see that um, you know, really small measures um, taken by a lot of people uh, consistently on a daily basis can have a really big impact. Um, so I am conflicted between uh, two fears. One is um, that the world is never going to go back uh, to the way it was before, but also on the other hand, that we're going to go back to the exact same world. Um, what I mean is that, you know, while where you're talking about COVID-19, the vast majority of humanity, um, they have to deal with diseases, preventable diseases that uh, have, uh, far long been banished from more privileged lives. Um, when we worry about the pandemic, uh, many people uh, will die of um, preventable disease, uh, will die silently, unforgotten, unattended. Uh, unfortunately, mothers will die in childbirth. Uh, children will die for want of clean water uh, and food. 
and uh, many impoverished people will die knowing that there is a cure they cannot afford. Um, so there are big problems to fix in healthcare. And I worry that after the pandemic, we might just go back uh, to the way uh, things were before. Um, that uh, this inequities in healthcare access will mean in the post pandemic period, um, it's the impoverished members who will suffer even more uh, because of the same illnesses that have plagued most of humanity for most of history. So my, uh, I'd, li I'd like to end uh, with a message that um, a year from now, I hope we repurpose uh, much of the, most of, a lot of the resources we've deployed uh, to fight the pandemic, to respond to other healthcare challenges mm -hmm. like uh, malnutrition, um, tuberculosis, malaria, HIV, AIDS. I hope the uh, structural inequities um, that have been exposed in our society and uh, that have led to this crisis, uh, that we are inspired and motivated to fix these because really we're all as safe or unsafe um, as our least um, protected members. I think the pandemic uh, highlights this. Um, I hope that um, you know a year from now, uh, and I hope my startup can play a role in this, that uh, artificial intelligence, uh, health tech companies, um, although they may be AI powered, they will be deeply human centered. Um, I hope that uh, humanity's brighter mind, brightest minds, uh, a lot of uh, you all at uh, the Thirubhai Ambani School and uh, other excellent schools like that, um, you know, work on some of these huge challenges that we're going to face uh, and help solve them. I hope a brighter future lies ahead uh, for us all um, at the other side of this pandemic. And I want to end by sharing a little graphic uh, and I want the graphic to speak for itself so that uh, we all understand uh, the challenges ahead of us. So as you can see, it's not just COVID-19 we have to worry about. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, taking the time uh, and allow me to, allowing me to share my uh, journey through the pandemic with you all. And um, on a final note, I'd also like to thank uh, the Thirubhai Ambani International School and all my teachers there for giving me all the tools to be a healthcare worker during the pandemic, um, to write a book about the pandemic and uh, to work on some of the interesting uh, solutions. Uh, I've been able to play a small role uh, in developing uh, to respond to the pandemic. Thank you.